ti fa om Sahana Bavato, Sahana Banakto, Sahaviriam Darabai, He Jasmina Badita Masto, Mavi Bisha Bahai, O Mitrena Maha. Om Mitre Namaha, Om Ravi Namaha, Om Ravi Namaha, Om Sari Namaha, Om Sari Namaha, Om Banavi Namaha, Om Banavi Namaha, Om Kage Namaha, Om Kage Namaha, Om Pushni Namaha, Om Pushni Namaha, Om Hirani Agabe Namaha, Om Hirani Agabe Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Savitre Namaha, Om Savitre Namaha, Om Bhaskare Namaha, Om Bhaskare Namaha, Om Mitre Namaha, Om Mitre Namaha, Om Rabi Namaha, Om Rabi Namaha, Om Sare Namaha, Om Sare Namaha, Om Banabe Namaha, Om Banabe Namaha. Om Kage Namaha, Om Kage Namaha, Om Pushni Namaha, Om Pushni Namaha, Om Hirani Agabe 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 Namaha. Om Hirani Agabe Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Mariche Namaha, Om Sabitre Namaha, Om Sabitre Namaha, Om Make Namaha, Om Make Namaha, Om Baskari Namaha. Om Bhaskare Namaha Om Shanti 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 Om Ti Si Si Bring your hands into Anjari Mudra Bow your head Offer your practice today to someone who's shown you unconditional love, human being, an animal being, or a nature being. Bring them into your mind's eye and visualize them. Dedicate your practice to them. Namaste. Welcome, everyone. Infrared's on, or do you want to walk now? How are you feeling? Summery or wintry? Somebody has an opinion. <laughs> uh, turn, can you turn that one off, David, please? What we'll do, yeah. So it seems to be the consensus is they're off. Okay. If you get cold, you can go and sit by the fire for a while. 
So last term, we touched a little bit on the Surya Namaskar mantras, and now we're going to learn them. Well, I, you're going to learn them. Uh, um, and so you can use them in your sun salutation. And uh, this is a way of really transforming the sun salutation. Um, I'll just start by reading a little bit um, from Shravatsa Ramaswamy's uh, book, The Complete Book of Vinyasa Yoga. Shravatsa Ramaswamy here. Um, Sun salutation. This is a very popular practice, but different schools practice it with some variations. So, who has done Surya Namaskar with mantras before? Okay, yeah, with two of us. And so, mostly in the Shiva and Andhra tradition, and other monastic traditions, the Surya Namaskar is done with the movement. And so you chant it as you move. Om Mitri Namaha, Om Ravi Namaha, Om Suri Namaha, etc. You move and chant the mantra. And um, obviously, silently to yourself. But in a lead class, the teacher can chant the mantra. And when the students know the sequence, the sequence, the, the students just move. So there's no instruction, but you have to know the sequence. And the first time I was exposed to this was in India in, a, in an ashram called Nayadam in uh, Kerala. And the teacher would just walk into the shala and you'd all stand up and the teacher would just go, Om Mitri Namaha, Om Ravi Namaha, Om Sari Namaha. And they would literally do it for 20 minutes to half an hour. And you would just spend all that time flowing with the mantra. And there was probably a group of about 60 of us there. And the energy, it was just amazing. Just like this incredible energy throughout the whole room, connecting everybody up. And we're doing it in the morning, uh, just at the time of the rising sun, which is when Surya Namaskar, sun salutation, worship is traditionally done. So this hour is called the hour, it's called Brahmahuta, and it means the uh, hour, the time of Brahma, Brahma being the creator. And so it's a time in the day when the prana, when the life force is at its strongest, and that is at the time of sunrise. But actually it's not at the time of sunrise, it's slightly before the time of sunrise. So when you get up early enough, you may notice that the birds start singing before the sun comes up over the horizon. Have you ever noticed that? Because that time before the sun comes, oh, appears over the horizon, that is a time when the prana is the strongest in the universe. And that's when the birds start singing. So they know that. <laughs> and so the idea is that you traditionally in India, you get up early and you face the rising sun and you perform your puja, which is your worship. And for many people in India, their worship is Surya Namaskar, sun salutation, facing the rising sun, but it would only be worship if it's done with mantra. So the mantras are what really make it Surya Namaskar. That makes sense? And then it, within the mantras, there's certain postures which are actually the Surya Namaskar itself. And in this sequence that we do, the full prostration is actually the Namaskar. Because the Namaskar is when you're offering yourself completely to the divine. And the divine in this form of worship is the sun. And throughout all kind of like indigenous cultures from the beginning of time, there's always been this tradition in many parts of the world of worshiping the sun. And it was obviously all part of our culture. It's probably what Stonehenge and all that stuff is all about. And so that is something which isn't done so much now in many places, although the Native Americans have a big thing of sun worship and so did the Aborigines. Um, and in India, it's something that's always been maintained. Surya Namaskar is a warm up, but it isn't a warm up. 
Okay, so it's a very good way of getting the prana moving and getting heat in the body. And it's on a more uh, physical plane, it's very good for bone density and strength. And it's said to be in India, it's just something that is used in Ayurveda to overcome depression, like doing the sun salutation with the mantra is given for that reason. To, in other words, it lifts a prana in the body and in the mind. So to do sun salutation with just as a physical exercise is a great thing. But if you do it with the mantra, it's also having a profound impact on the mind because every mantra that you just chanted is a form of Shakti. So Shakti is the divine energy which penetrates the mind and the body on the pranic level, the level of uh, psychic energy. And that has a very profound effect on the person, which is why we use mantras so much. Um, and so each of those different, slightly different names of the sun are different profiles or little yantras of Shakti, and they are impacting your mind body as you move. Well, not actually as you move, because in this tradition, you do it when you're not moving. <laughs> Does that make sense? So there's lots of different um, benefits of the sun salutation. And the thing about sun salutation is it can be adapted. You'll notice that sometimes in this practice, you might just do one sun salutation. Yeah. But in other times, you can do more sun salutation. It depends. And one of the things it depends on is what you do before and what you do after. So if you do a lot of hasta vinyasas and you do then sort of like Ada Halasa, Ada uh, Uttanasana, like half forward folds and then full forward folds and then Ukkatasana squats and all those other things we do at the beginning, they are in some ways taking the place of a Surya Namaskar. And then you might only want to do one round of Surya Namaskar. Uh, but other days you might want to start your practice, especially if you're kind of like, I find especially when I'm cold, the weather's cold, I've been working outside all day, I'm cold. I'll just go straight into Surya Namaskar and I'll do more Surya Namaskar to like prepare me for the practice more. And also, if you want to bring a devotional mood to your practice, it's very, it can be really useful sometimes to start if you're using the mantra with the Surya Namaskar. It's very beautiful way of practicing. Anyway, I was going to read from this. Uh, there are 12 vinyasas. Each movement should be done with the correct breathing. Normally, mantras are used. They are to be chanted, heard, or mentally recited while doing one's breath in or out, as the case may be. You may do the exercise without mantras, but during the time allotted for the mantra, you must hold your breath, preferably for the time needed to chant the mantra. When you do the mantra for the sun salutation, it is chanted at the end of a particular movement and when holding your breath in Kumbhaka. So at the time the mantra is recited, there is no movement of the body and no movement of the breath. Now that is what distinguishes this from most systems of Surya Namaskar with mantra. The mantra is not chanted when you move and it's not chanted when you're breathing. It's chanted in Kumbhaka. Why? Because in Kumbhaka, when the breath is, is suspended, it's like the penetration of the Shakti of the mantra can go deeper. Also in suspension of breath, the mind stops and the prana stops. So when you're doing pranayama and when you retain the breath, the prana stops. The prana stops in the place where you put your mind, which is why it's so powerful in pranayama. But you can also do that in the Surya Namaskar. It's amazing. And so that, what you need to do now, when we do it in a minute, the Surya Namaskar, at the end of the movement, you have to pause the breath. So for example, if you're just, if you're reaching up, you get to the end of the movement, that's an inhale. And then usually at the end of the inhale, you start the exhale and you fold forward. Am I right? Okay, but now you don't do that. You inhale and you reach up, hold the breath. Om Ravi Namaha, fold forward. 
hands on the floor, empty the lungs, hold the breath out. Om Sri Namaha. So that's the way it works. And so what happens is there's no, you can't rush this on salutation. You have to go slow and you have to be very conscious of the kumbhakas between the breaths. So that's difficult. It takes learning. But that's what we're going to be doing. Yes? It's more interesting. And it keeps me amused. <laughs> okay. I think that's, uh, that I'll talk about it a little bit more each week and read about the actual, yeah, on here, on this sheet, which is the one you're going to leave behind, um, uh, you'll see that there's a little short translation, but each week I'll give you the full translation of each mantra, because each one of these mantras has a whole different kind of relationship to different entities. Prostrations to him is affectionate to all. Prostrations to him is a cause of change. Prostrations to him who induces activity, etc. All ways of worshipping the sun, the giver of life, the giver of shakti, the giver of prana, everything survives because of the sun. And traditionally, as I said, it's practiced in the first thing in the morning facing east. But what is the sun symbolic of? The inner light of consciousness. And so you can carry, you carry that inner light in your heart with you all the time. The sun is always with you. The sun, the light of consciousness is always in your heart. So whenever you practice a sun salutation, that's the feeling that you have, that you're worshiping the divine light within yourself. And then you don't necessarily have to get up before the birds. <laughs> Although it's very nice to do it then. Okay, and now you have this sheet. Mm -hmm. So on here, you can actually learn the mantra. I'll be testing you all next week on this. And then on this side, you have where the, you can see the sequence of breaths and the sequence of postures. It's on both sides of the sheet. Yeah? So that should help you learn it. Sorry. Oh, yes, good, good question. So. You, we start off by learning the Namaskar mantra, but there's two other. The Bijas are the seed mantras, and the Vedic mantras are from the Vedas. And gradually, when you get used to it, you chant all three. So what that means is the Kumbhaka is longer. We start off learning. This one is going to be enough for most of you, believe me. Yeah, because and but you can eventually learn. And when you do it with Ramaswamy, that's what he does. He does a sun salutation and you have to hold the breath long enough for him to re repeat those three mantras. But we're just going to do the Namaskar. Yeah, it's quite, when you get the hang of it, it's quite easy to learn. Just so you know, later on, what you also have is you have the drishtis in the mantra. So you're gazing to the point where you're going to put the shakti. But one thing at a time. Okay, stand up. So Kate, this is going to be new to you, this sun salutation. So just watch us do around and then join in and do what you can. Yeah, you'll be fine. So we will start with a couple of Hasta Vinyasas. Dag yourselves a little bit on your mats. If you're close to the wall, turn to face into the room. Standing into Larsen, chest up and chin down. Close your eyes and gaze into your heart. Come into your Ujjayi breath. Inhale, arms widen overhead, flip your palms. Start the exhale, lower the arms on the breath. Inhale, arms widen overhead, flip your palms. 
Exhale, lean to the right, lift the chin slightly, look straight ahead. Inhale, come to center, chin down, lift. Exhale to the left, lift the chin slightly, look straight ahead. Inhale, center, lift. Exhale, arms widen down. Inhale, arms widen overhead. Chin down, chest up, hips back, fold halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold, just halfway so your body is parallel with the floor. And inhale, come up. Lift up, lift out the hips, hips back, chin down, look navel, exhale halfway again. And just stay there, inhale. And exhale, core, Uddiyana Bandra a little stronger. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold all the way down. Hold the legs or take the big toes and inhale, little look up. Exhale, fold. Short inhale, long exhale. Completely empty your lungs. Short inhale, relax your neck towards your nose tip, long exhale. Relax, flip the palms, hips back, chin down, inhale, come up. Arch back a little bit with the chin down, open your shoulders and exhale, Tadasan. Okay, so I'll lead you now through Surya Namaskar, and then we'll start working with the mantra. Standing in Tadasana, more towards the front of your mat. <clears throat> Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Okay, let's start with Anjali Mudra. Okay, so Anjali Mudra is, this is Namaste. So when you, if you're going to greet someone, namaste, you do namaste, you have your hands together, like so, over the heart, and or over the, if you're a greeting like an elder, an older person, a teacher, a guru, a saint, or the altar, then you do it, you do this, and you, you, you bring the thumbs to the third, to the center of the forehead. So that would be a more of a mark of respect as well. But when you're just generally doing a greeting, it sums over the heart, namaste, with the soul in me, uh, connects and respects the soul in you. That's namaste. But Anjali Mudra is not namaste. Anjali Mudra is a mudra. So in, a, the, in the Anjali, the hands are separate like this, They're that shape. And the thumbs come back over towards the heart, but the fingers point slightly away from the body. So this represents a lotus bud. It should be the shape of a, a bud, a, the bud of a lotus flower or a water lily. And so it represents the potential for the opening of the heart chakra, okay? So this is how you begin your, and finish your sun salutation because it's a mark of, it's an offering, it's a prayer you're doing, yeah? So it's, this is one thing, this is namaste or namaskar. In India, that's what everybody will be doing to you and then bowing and going namaste, namaste. And sometimes they also just, like a, a shorthand version is they just touch the, touch the heart. Namaskar, namaste. Anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> but useful to know if you go to India. Yeah, okay. Inhale. So now you know what Anjali Mudra is. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. And the chest is up and the chin is down. You're looking towards the heart. 
Inhale, widen overhead, flip your palms. You can do a little arch back as long as it doesn't go into your back. And exhale, fold all the way down. Bend the knees as much as you need to to get the hands on the floor. A little inhale into your back ribs. And then exhale, squat all the way down. Heels may rise, forehead to knees, empty the lungs completely. Little shallow inhale into your back ribs. Hop or step back. Chaturanga or knees down for half Chaturanga. Then all the way to the floor, fully inhale as you bring the hands forward and press the palms together, full prostration. Hands back beside the rib cage, lift back to Chaturanga and fully exhale. Pause. Inhale, upward facing dog, chin down, pause. Exhale, downward facing dog, hips up. Fully empty the lungs. Hold the breath out, hop or step forward, squat down, Ukatas and heels may rise. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, fold into the legs, Uttanasana. Flip the palms, hips back, tummy in, chin down, rise. Pause at the end of the movement, full lungs. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Release the hands, inhale. Exhale, Anjali. Feel the pause at the end of the breath. Inhale, widen overhead, flip. Exhale, fold. Leave the empty the lungs, pause. Little inhale. Try to keep the abdomen on the thighs and exhale, squat down. Go right to the end of the breath until you feel the mula bandha, pelvic floor lift. Keep chin down. Little shallow inhale into your back ribs. Hold the breath. Hop or step back. Bring the knees down if you need to, lower halfway. And exhale fully there and hold the breath out. Then all the way to the floor. Inhale, full prostration. Hold the breath in. Hands back. Lift to Chaturanga, fully exhale. And inhale, upward facing dog, hold the breath in, move the chest forward, lengthen the spine. Exhale back, downward facing dog, long, long exhale, get to the end of the breath, banders. Hop or step forward, squat down, Ukkatasan, empty the lungs, hold the breath out. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, fold into the legs, Uttanasana, completely empty the lungs. At the end of the breath, pause. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Exhale, prayer to the heart, hold the breath out. Release the hands, inhale, Tadasana. Okay, so now in each of those little gaps, we're going to put the mantra, or I'm going to put the mantra. Any questions before we begin? Inhale. <laughs> so, huh? Okay, yeah, don't stray. Uh, so if you find it hard to hold the breath, it's important not to strain. Until you get used to it, you might have to take extra little breaths here and there. That's okay. We're just learning. Yeah? Um, yeah, that's the most important thing. Don't strain your breath. If you, you can always, if you need to, just take a little breath between. If, you, if there's places where it's hard is in the strength base postures, the chaturanga. 
the upward facing dog. Is that what you, is that where you found it? It's where it's hardest to sort of keep the breath. But it's really training you to um, control the breath, but also it's been training, training you to keep real stability in the body. So you're going to spend longer in Chaturanga, which you're now doing, which you're doing twice. You're going to spend longer in Up Dog. You're going to, everything's going to take a little bit longer. And um, if you need the extra bit of breath, that's okay. And because you're holding the chaturangas longer, if you're on the edge with chaturanga, keep your knees down. Inhale. Exhale. Om Mitri Namaha. Om Ravi Namaha. Om Sri Namaha. Inhale, sure. Exhale, squat. Om Banavi Namaha. Little inhale. Chaturanga. Hold. Om Kage Namaha. Om Pushni Namaha. Back. Om Hirani Agabe Namaha. Up. Om Mariche Namaha. Wait for it. Mariche Namaha. Back. Empty the lungs. Om Adi Chai Namaha, forward. Om Savi Chai Namaha. Hold. Om Makai Namaha, up. And then bring the hands to Anjali. Fully exhale, hold the breath out. Om Bhaskari Namaha. Release the hands, Tadasana. Okay, so when you're at the end of the movement, coming up at the end, there's no mantra here. You go up, you pause the breath, and then the final mantra comes in Anjali. Okay, go again. Anjali. Om Mitri Namaha. Om Ravi Namaha. Om Sari Namaha. Now, Sabrina. Om Banavi Namaha. Chaturanga. Om Kage Namaha. Full prostration. Om Pushni Namaha. Chaturanga. Om Hirani Agabe Namaha. Up dog. Hold. Om Mariche Namaha. Back. Om Mariche Namaha. Chin down. Om Savitre Namaha. Straighten. Fold. Om Ake Namaha. Up. Om Bhaskari Namaha. Awesome. 
Yes, that was great. Well done. <laughs> okay, that, that's really, I'm not going to teach some All I'm going to do from now on is just walk in and go, Om Vitri Namaha. Yeah? Can you see it? Right, any questions? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is, I talked about this the other week. So you don't, you can, when you, when you jump forward at the, towards the end, then you, you can take a little in you know, for a long while I was teaching at the beginning while we were all learning this, you do a little inhale as you come forward. Yeah. And then, but you don't need to make it a big breath. It's just enough. You exhale fully in down dog. And when you're in the down dog and you do that full exhale, remember you, it's a very long exhale, probably longer than the others. And at the end of it, there's the banders. So there's a seal, then you release the banders. And if you can do it without breathing in, you hop straight forward. And as you sink into Ukutasan, more you push more air out of the lungs because of the compression. Yes? If you can do that, do it. Otherwise, end of the down dog banders. And then you take a little inhale as you hop forward and then you squat down and fully exhale. So you have to do, you know, that's an example of having to take another little extra breath. But one of the things you're learning when you're doing the other postures, especially the forward bended seated forward bends and the Maha Mudra and the Asamavriti breathing where you're lengthening the exhale and pausing at the end of the breath. As you cultivate that more, you'll find it gradually easier to hold your breath out for longer. So it's all kind of connected. It's all help. All the bits are helping each other. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Now you have this week, learn the mantra and then we'll go from there. Not just one, all of them. Turn the face this way. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. Hop a step to feet apart. Inhale, arms over the head, flip the palms. Turn the right foot out and the left foot in. Square the hips to the short side of your mat. Back foot in 45 degrees, warrior one stance. And then we should, normally we sweep the arms really wide here, but you're going to sweep the arms more forward so that you um, don't hit your neighbor. Inhale there. You can arch back a little bit with the chin down if you want. And then as you exhale, bring the arms forward and down, rotate the shoulder joints, bend the front knee, shoulders back, tailbone tucked to pubic bone. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Straighten the leg, lift out the hips. Exhale, go down. Inhale, rise. If you've got the room, you can sweep your arms. Exhale, go down. Good. Keep the front knee bent. Inhale, raise the arms. Overhead, flip the palms. Stay. Exhale, front knee well bent. Back leg well grounded. Move the chest back. Open the shoulders. Open the chest. Ujjayi breathing, please. Tailbone tucked towards pubic bone, lifting out of the hips. Keeping the front knee bent, inhale, just arch back a bit, look up. Exhale, fold forward over the front leg, both hands to the floor. Keep the front knee bent. Interlock the fingers, inhale all the way up, keep the front knee bent. Exhale all the way down, hands to the floor. Good. Keep the front knee bent. Inhale, raise the back leg. Front knee bent. Exhale. And then if you're comfortable there, inhale, extend the arms back in line with your hips and your back leg and balance on the right leg. If you can do it, it's more difficult, but if you can do it with the front knee bent, like really bend, like it was in the warrior two, warrior one. If that's too much, you can straighten the front leg. 
And then slowly you bring the hands down the back foot where it was. Flip the palms and inhale, come on. Arch back, straighten the front leg. Exhale, switch the feet, go the other way. Keep the arms up. Turn the back foot in well. Inhale. Exhale, bend the front knee. Sweep the arms, widen down here. Okay. Inhale, widen up, keep the front knee bent. Oh no, we straightened last time, straighten the front leg. Yeah, you can do it both ways. And then exhale, bend the front knee, widen down. Palms up. One more time, inhale, widen up. Exhale, widen down. This time you're gonna hold. And then inhale, just bring the arms up over the head and flip your palms. Keep the front knee bent. Three full breaths. Try to move your shoulders back, move your arms back, really open your chest. Keep your tailbone drawing towards your pubic bone. Keep your right hip moving forward, your left hip moving back. The outside of the back foot grounding, the front knee pushing away. Even Ujjayi breaths. Good. And then on the next set, inhale, arch back a little bit. And on the exhale, fold forward over the leg, hands to the floor. And then flip the palms, inhale, come back up. You can arch back if you want to, keep the front knee bent. And then exhale, go all the way down. If you need to straighten the front leg here, don't struggle, but if you can keep it bent, inhale, raise the back leg parallel with the floor. And if you're comfortable on the exhale, bring your arms back and extend the hands towards the wall behind you. Bring your body so it's more parallel with the floor. And breathe. Ramaswamy makes you bend, the, bend and straighten the leg in this, but I'm going to stay. And then bring the back foot down, exhale. Flip the palms, inhale, come all the way up and arch back. Exhale, turn to the side, Trikonasana Stiti, bring the hands to the waist. Good, inhale, bring the arms wide and overhead. Actually, that's not gonna work because we're too close to each other. Bring the arms out to shoulder level and rotate the palms up. Arch back, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Good. Take the heels or the big toes. Inhale, look up. And exhale, fold. Inhale on one, on two, on three. Exhale on one, on two, on three, on four, on five. On six, inhale on one, on two, on three, exhale on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six. Do another breath like that. If your head's on the floor, so because you chip, bring the back of your head to the floor. Just keep moving your body through. Relax your neck, Trish. Trishti's nose to keep the neck relaxed. Elbows are wide, but the shoulder blades they lift towards the ceiling so the thoracic spine lengthens. Good, and then release the hands and interlock the hands behind your head and exhale. And on the inhale, lift with the arms, elbows wide, come all the way up and arch back. And look up. Keep the hands on the back of the head. Exhale, hands to the waist, Trikonasana Stiti. Inhale there. Exhale, soften the knees, hop or step the feet together. Turn to face the front. Inhale, arms widen overhead, flip your palms. 
Exhale, point the fingers up. Inhale from the upper back, arch, extend through your shoulders. Exhale, fold all the way down. Little inhale. Exhale, Ukatasan. You okay, Jane? Inhale. Chaturanga Dandasan. Inhale, Udva Mukha Svanasan. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasan. Three breaths. At the end of each breath, pause bandhas. So if you're inhaling for four, exhale for eight, five, ten, whatever it is for you. And release the bandhas before you begin the next inhale. Keep that wide. You want to be able to breathe into the back of your lungs as you're sort of squashing them. That's it. They, they go like that. Put your head down. They go that way. But these go that way. So you've got spiraling through your arms. Now come back to down dog if you can. Keeping your arms like that. You okay? Rest if you need to. That's okay. And then when you're ready, hop or step forward. Ukadasan. Sit down, Dandasan. Inhale, bring the legs wide apart. Make some space. You can be sideways on your mat if you need. And sit on a block if your back is rounding. Inhale, bring your arms over your head. Flip your palms. Rotate towards the right leg. Exhale, fold over the right leg. Inhale, come up. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. What part of the leg are you, what part of the foot are you pushing out of? The ball of the foot. Don't over flex, don't completely flex your foot because it puts too much pressure into your Achilles and your hamstring. You push out for the balls of the foot, so the foot is at a slight angle away from you. The toes come back, but the ball of the foot pushes out. The ball of the foot is slightly beyond the heel. What some of you have got is the ball of the foot back and the, and the foot flex back between, towards the body, and that's overextending the back of the leg. What you need is to be able to have stability in the front of the leg to support the back of the leg. Yes? Remember. Inhale, come up. Torn hamstring is a long recovery. And then exhale, fold over the right leg again. Make the leg active, push out for the ball of the foot. Inhale, come up. And then all the same leg, exhale, go down again. Hold and breathe. Hold the foot, hold the shin. Inhale. Close the eyes, look at the navel with the eyes closed. One. Short inhale, long exhale. Two. Look at your navel, Sophie. Concentrate. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Over the other leg, exhale, go down. And keep working out for the ball of the right foot. Inhale, come up. Exhale, same leg, go down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, same leg, go down, hold for three breaths. When you when you've moved as much as you can from your hips, let your head drop. Eyes closed, look nabby, navel. Lengthen your exhales.
push. Keep this leg active. Open the helps open the hip. Lift the palms, inhale, come up. Good. And then inhale and just twist towards the left leg. Keep the twist and exhale over the right leg. So look up under the left shoulder and open the chest towards the ceiling if you can. You don't have to go all the way down. Inhale, come up. Flip the palms. Twist strongly over the left leg. Keep the twist. Exhale, fold over the right. If you can, hold the inside of the foot with the right hand and the outside of the foot with the left hand. We're actually going different ways here, but it doesn't matter. And just open the up, upper shoulder and breathe. Try to breathe into the left side of your rib cage on the inhale and into your lower abdomen, pelvic floor on the exhale. You're okay, Kerry. Bend your knees as much as you need to so you get a bit more ability to move forward. Then inhale, come up. Good. Exhale, twist towards the right leg and fold inside the left leg. Yeah, you did the other side. And inhale, come up. Right, the more you the more you do the twist at the beginning, the easier it is at the end. And then exhale, go down. And if you can, hold the inside of the foot with the right hand, the outside of the foot with the left hand. But if you've got that top arm up in the air, try to lift it and extend through the top side of the body. So you open the right lung right up. Good. Main thing is the breath. Inhale, come up. Interlock fingers, lift, exhale, fold straight forward. Put your hands on the floor. Inhale, lift up a little bit. And then exhale, fold as much as you comfortably can. Round your back, relax your neck, look nabby, lengthen the exhale. Try and still keep that action through the legs. A little bit more point, yeah, there. That's good. That's good. So the palms, inhale, come up. Exhale, hands behind you, 10 inches, fingers forward. If you're in a really wide stance, I suggest you bring your legs a little bit closer together. And then on the inhale, uh, lift the hips. Optional, drop the head back. Point the toes into the floor. Exhale, come down. Good, and then inhale, come up. Hold, exhale, inhale, nudge the hips a little higher, and exhale, come down. Cross the ankles, put the hands on the floor, hop back or step back, chaturanga. And inhale, Uddha Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest and chin down, hips high, navel in, contract the Mula Bandha. Pause. Inhale forward into a low cobra, lift your hands off the floor, point your toes, ground your pelvis. Exhale, hands to the floor, push the seat to the heels and lengthen the back, then come into a downward facing dog. And then inhale, hop forward, and exhale, Upatasan. Sit down, Dandasan. Inhale, arms over the head, Niralamba Dandasan, flip the palm. Exhale, slowly roll down onto your back with your arms over your head. 
And then inhale, bring your hands to your sides, relax into Shavasana. Let go of Ujjayi breathing. Relax. So I've been given the option for the last couple of weeks of Shavasana where the feet are apart and the arms are slightly away from the body. But you also know, take rest. And these are options. There isn't one or the other specifically. They do different things and you feel differently. Sometimes you need one, sometimes you need the other. So you can choose. Take rest is more energetically kind of centering for the Sushumna Nadi. It keeps the prana more concentrated in the spine. Shavasana disperses the prana a little more through the limbs into the extremities and it's slightly more relaxing. They perform a different function. Inhale, feet together, arms over the head, lift the palms, fully exhale. Hold the breath out at the end of the exhale, sit up and fold all the way forward and take the big toes, bend the knees if you need to. And then inhale, flip the palms and come up. And exhale, roll down one vertebrae at a time onto your back with your arms over your head and fully exhale there. At the end of the exhale, sit up and slide the hands over the tops of the feet with the fingers towards the heels. Keep exhaling till you're completely empty. Second vinyasa. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. And go all the way down on the inhale, rounding your back one vertebrae at a time and then fully exhale there the lungs empty draw the lower navel abdomen in the uddiyana band to hold it sit up and try to keep the lungs empty as you fold and this time take the outside edges of your feet good flip the palms inhale come up and this time, exhale, Dandasan, hands beside the hips. And do Arkana Dhanarasana again, shooting bow pose. We did this last week, didn't we? Yes, everybody enjoyed it, I remember. Okay, so uh, inhale, bring the arms over the head and flip the palms. And exhale, fold forward, take both big toes. And if you need to, bend the right knee a little bit to get hold of the right big toe. If you need a strap, get hold, you need it on there. And then pick the right foot up. And on an exhale, draw the right foot back towards your ear like you're answering the phone. I want to make it a little bit easier. Grab that. Are you okay? Julie, can you hold that? Get your foot high. The, with, with the heel near the floor, it's a, it's a nightmare. Try and get your foot up before you bring it back. And breathe. That's good. You've obviously practiced that a lot this week. It's a, a huge improvement on last week. And then inhale and extend the leg straight up to the ceiling. Release the left hand and hold the leg with both hands. Here's the foot or the shin, or the thigh. Exhale, round into the leg, forehead towards the shin. Good, inhale there, and then keeping the forehead on the shin, exhale, lower down, fold over the leg. Just keep hold of that one leg or foot and inhale, and then exhale fully to your empty and fold over the right leg. Knees can be bent, don't make it a struggle. 
flip the palms, inhale, come up. So you could have stayed there for three breaths, but I want to just move through this vinyasa. And then exhale, go down and take both toes. And then inhale, pick the right foot up, left foot up. And exhale, draw it back. And just put the foot as close to your ear as you can get it. Keep looking at the big toe of the left leg. And so you have a drift speak. Ujjayi breathing. Oh, Judy, you haven't got a strap. You need a longer arm. That's good, though. Try not to roll so much onto the outside of your right hip. <laughs> good. And then straighten the leg. Do that. Oh, just uh, Do you tuck? Hang on a minute. Let's get to the end of the vinyasa. Into the leg. Take a breath. Inhale and exhale. Your eyes can be closed. Fold all the way down. Try to control that descent with your exhale, and then just do a forward fold over that left leg. One long exhale. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Exhale, fold forward over both legs. Take any hand hold, take an inhale, and then take three breaths with long exhales. Optional bandits at the end of each exhale. Okay, Sarah. You okay. Sarah? Stop if you need to. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Exhale, Dandasan. Chest up, chin down. Long exhales, look hard. Yes, Robert, sorry. Most you're going to need to get the knee a little bit out. You, if you're really flexible, you might be able to keep it close to your body, but most people have to bring the knee out a bit Would because you, as obviously it, I don't feel as much of my hip here when I pull it. Yeah, yeah, if you bring the foot up yeah. and then try to bring it back more towards your ear. Uh -huh. So, you let so it you're like that, you let it hang out. Uh -huh. yeah? yeah, because the next phase is to bring the leg up. Put the head forward and put the leg behind your head. So if your knee didn't go out, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. I what I'm doing now. Oh yeah, I've got. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back in the room. <laughs> okay. Inhale, arms over the head. Flip the palms. And exhale, round the back, lay down. Bend both knees, bring the heels close to your buttocks. Exhale, bring your arms back to your hips. Inhale, lift your hips. Pause at the end of the inhale, slight hold of the breath, hands pressed down to the floor. Exhale, slowly down, one vertebrae at a time. Ujjayi breathing. Inhale, lift up. At the end of the movement, pause the breath, move the sternum towards the chin. Try and keep the knees and the feet together. Exhale, go down. So you feel more of a connection to the mula bandha in the center of the, in the perineum. The feet apart, that's not so strong. And then inhale, come up. And hold. You can now hold your ankles or you can bring the hands interlocked under your body if you want. And take three breaths. Deep inhales, shallow exhales. Optional, bring the hands over uh, underneath the shoulders with the elbows up and lift into full wheel. Three breaths. You choose. Exhale. Inhale, straighten your arms. 
felt stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Take another breath. And then when you're ready, tuck the chin in and lower onto the back of your head. You need a bit more rotation in those shoulder joints so you can get arms straighter, but good effort. Well done. Okay. You want to come up? You don't know. <laughs> Leave it today. We'll work on another day. You're fine. Come down, bend the knees, hug the knees to the chest. Three breaths. Long exhales, eyes closed. Okay, cross the ankles, hold the feet, inhale, rock up, exhale, rock back. And then come into a seated position. Okay, we're gonna stop the vinyasas there. We're gonna go back and work on our headstand practice a little more. Everybody here apart from Kate, has a headstand practice. They know, everybody know what to do. Okay, choose your poison and do your practice. Dolphin. Three point pose, half headstand, full headstand with the wall, full headstand without the wall. They are your options. And shout if you need help. Do you do headstand? I used to. I used to. Do you want to do half headstand today? No. Okay. Do you want to, okay, so today I can help you with this more another day. So today you do dolphin. So Julie's going to show you how to do dolphin. Are you doing dolphin, Julie? Oh, you're gonna do it. Who's doing dolphin? Who's doing dolphin? No one. Oh, I'll show you then. This is yes, there, perfect. Sarah's doing dolphin. Can you do this? Exhaling back, inhaling forward. Sarah's doing a, a sort of like torturous slow pace. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so inhale forward. Uh, sorry, the other way. Exhale forward, inhale back. Sorry, I'm a bit wrong. Exhale forward, inhale back. Make it shorter. Your stance is too long. Bring your feet in a bit. Okay. So you could you could do um you can do a half head stand. Okay, you'd rather not. Okay, so do shoulder stand or legs up the wall. Yeah. So if you're doing dolphin, do three rounds of 10. You're right, David. <laughs> Make sure the shoulders are lifting while you do just one leg at a time. Coming in or going up? Huh? Coming in is mostly or going up. That's okay. Just bring the feet to the toes to the wall and then extend one leg up and get the extension and the s stability in the base before you bring the other leg up or change legs. Okay. That's great. And now just breathe. The wall's there, you're really safe. Bring one foot to the wall, other foot to the wall. Now, before you rush down, take a breath. And then exhale on the movements down. So whatever you did, if you finished doing it, do it again. Good, that's really nice, Sophie. That's a good headstand. Nice, Sabrina, nice hitter. Practice, practice, practice. Good, and then if you're in the headstand, well done, Trish. I'm just gonna adjust you a little bit. You're safe, I won't let you fall. Push out through your balls of your feet more and extend this way, up. Push there. Point your feet a little bit and push there. That's flexing. Push up there. So that's the highest bit of your foot. Good. Okay. Your legs are too weak. Strengthen for your legs. Strengthen for your core. 
Good. Now breathe and lift your shoulders. Legs need to be there. That's nice. Everybody come down now. Keep doing your headstand practice at home. And um, you can even do little videos. And if you're not sure if you're doing what you're doing, as Craig said, I can't get to everyone, then we'll look at the video and I'll help you with child's pose. So if you've been out there a long time and I'll help you just address any issues. When you're ready, come onto your back and relax into asthma. Good, Sarah. Well done. Well done, Trish. You got a little bit of a hinge in the middle, so you're in your in the position. You, instead of being straight, you're you're a bit little pike like this. Okay. So to, in order to get that, so it, so it works better. You have to just tuck your tailbone in a little bit more, and so as your tailbone goes down, it lengthens you a little bit more through the front of the waist. And to help with that, you want to keep your femurs rotated in. Yeah, like you would into that. So these not want to go in a bit, which will tuck your front of your pelvic pubis that way, but then you tuck your tailbone towards it and then you push out here. So your feet should be in that position. Yeah, and that will help keep this mutated. And that's what makes you straight because you're not working the, that part of the body, the pelvis and the muller band, and the, you, you're beginning to pike a little bit. And that puts the weight forward. See, it's a job to get your shoulders up. That's why they call it the top. <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's something you learn. That's why they call it the topsy turvy pose. <laughs> Relax in Shavasana. You want the door closed, do you? You're okay. All right. <laughs> so ideally, when you do your practice at home, you would a combination of shoulder stand and head stand, which I talked about the other week. But um, just working on the preparatory postures for head stand, also very beneficial. Let go of your ujjayi breathing, completely relax your mind. Let go of any impressions from your practice. And relax your feet. Feel the relaxation flowing up through your legs. Relax your hips, lower back, upper back, all your spinal muscles. And see if you can feel that you're perfectly symmetrical in your body on the floor. Equal weight in both heels, both buttocks and the shoulders, in the hands and the arms. So the prana that you've generated in your practice can flow out into every cell of your body healing, cleansing. Spiritual energy into every cell. And liver and kidneys. Relax your intestines and your heart. Relax your lungs. Let your palms go heavy. Mm -hmm. 
and relax your shoulders and your throat. Relax your tongue and your upper lip. Relax your lower lip and your jaw. Relax your cheeks and your eyes. And then just drop back behind the eyes in line with the eyebrow center. And relax the outer chakra. So you feel a light filled space in the center of your skull where your thoughts, your worries, and your preoccupations would be. And just let that space empty and fill with a soft white light like a full moon. And then just rest in the moon. Nothing else matters and nothing else exists. Completely relax. Deep in your breath. Bring your feet together and your arms by your sides. <clears throat> Inhale, arms over your head. Left side long, right side long. <laughs> Both sides long. Bend the knees, hug the knees, and come into a seated position for pranayama. Sit on your blocks or on a cushion, kneeling or cross legged. Ujjayi Aviloma, close. Left hand chin mudra. Right hand Vishnu mudra, first two fingers to the palm. Ring finger and thumb open and close the nostrils. Bring the hand into position, rest the arm on the body. 
Lift the chest, relax the shoulders, chin slightly down, eyes closed. Inhale, Ujjayi, both nostrils. Retain, close both nostrils. Exhale, left, no sound. Inhale, Ujjayi, both. Retain. Exhale, right, no sound. Draw that exhale out long and smooth and quiet. Inhale, Ujjayi, both. Retain. Exhale left, no sound. Continue in that way or we will flick the gaze to the mamas. Inhale, J. look nose tip, third eye, navel, soft palate, navel, perineum, retain. Look heart. Exhale right, no sound. Looking into the cave of the heart with the chest lifted. Inhale, Ujjayi, nose tip, third eye, soft palate, navel, perineum, retain. Look heart. Exhale left, no sound. Ujjayi, nose tip. Third eye, soft palate, navel, perineum, retain, heart, exhale right, no sound. Ujjayi, nose tip, third eye, soft palate, navel, look, perineum. Retain, look hard, exhale left. Inhale, Ujjayi, Nasaka, Brumaja, Lalata, Nabi, Mula, retain, Redaya. Exhale left, no sound. Do a couple more in your own time with or without the visualization. When you're doing it yourself, you don't say the names, you just flick the gaze to the points. Where your gaze goes, your prana will follow. And the next time you exhale through your left nostril, <coughs> release your hand and just meditate for a few moments on your form of the divine or the mantra Om.
And begin to deepen your breath. And bring your hands into Anjali Mudra. Inhale deeply for all. Guru Brahma, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Guru Sakshat, Param Brahma, Param Brahma, touch my Sri, touch my Sri, Gurave Namaha, Gurave Namaha. Shanti 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 Om Peace You have the right to work but for the work's sake only. You have no right to the fruits of the work. Desire for fruits of the work should never be your motive in working. And don't give way to laziness either. Renounce attachment to the fruits. Be even tempered in success and failure. For it is this evenness of temper which is meant by yoga. Work done with anxiety about results is far inferior to work done without such anxiety in the calm of self-surrender. Seek refuge in the knowledge of Brahman. Those who work selfishly for results eventually become unhappy. Second discourse, Bhagavad Gita. Om Namah Shivaya. Namaste.